Hey guys, Shadow here, bringing you my campaign let's play for Wintertooth. Um, unfortunately, I had some audio issues, so this isn't a live com. I am commentating over um, the already sort of recorded gameplay. Uh, I will be using Throg. Um, his sort of abilities is he's a powerful melee fighter, has siege attacker, siege attacker attribute, and he has an ability called Copious Vomit. He's also got a building in uh, Eringrad that's special to him. His starting units will be the Norsken Warhounds, Trolls and Ice Trolls. They get a, a resistance buff of 10%. For him, all his units in the army are now immune to all attrition, which is really nice. And he also gets a 15% upkeep bonus for Norse Controls and Norse Ice Troll units. Where no crops grow, they have to build. Thus, I have come to guide their war derelict. Why waste such savagery on each other while the southern lands are ripe for ravaging? Hail, Throg, King of Trolls. You venture far from your natural lair. These lands are rich with meat and war. Feast upon them, grow in strength and number to bring ruin beyond. To the east, the icy mountains harbor the dwarfs of Kratadrak. They mine great treasures for themselves. But all of this can be yours for the taking for the gods. To the south, Kislev. These men of the bear dare to rule your kingdom. 
Let them feel the power of the monstrous horde. Destroy Erengrad and reclaim your rightful throne in Throne Country. Beyond Kislev lies the Empire. Its bickering states of power are ripe with treasures. Take from these soft, sullen lands and establish new ports on their shores from which you can raid further. Across the Sea of Claws, a would-be challenger lies in wait aboard his precious ship. Devour him and do as you wish with his marauding warriors. Throg. You are the waiter too. Cunning and all-powerful. Let the realms of man suffer in horror and pain as your monstrous horde lays waste to all. The harsh and desolate... So guys, here we are. We've got the first objective, um, Land of Ice and War. So we need to attain level 1 allegiance with any god. So how the Norse can just play, effectively we have the god bar in the top top part of the screen. Um, they will give you different bonuses depending on what you do. When you raise a settlement, um, we will be taking the Norse settlements, but when we raise any other settlements, they give you allegiance to one of the gods which give you various buffs. So uh, we have the Hound, um, the Eagle, the serpent and the crow so the crow sort of unleashes a plague across the world i don't really know how it works but it sounds cool the serpent uh, gives you a chaos sorcerer the hound lets you unlock uh, a hell cannon called the ice forged legion and the eagle lets you get a lord of change azric the maze keeper so we will be working to one of those i'm not sure which one we'll go for but it is a cool mechanic that they've got. Um, you don't get a lot of income. So your income is like you would the Chaos. You have to raise and sack um, and raid as well. Um, the only way, well, not the only way, but with the Norse Contrive, you don't have to take all of the settlements. If you defeat a Norse faction leader in battle, you can immediately force them into peace and then immediately force them into to confederate with you so you don't have to go around taking all of the settlements and stuff like that another thing that they have is you cannot take settlements in the old world um, where the empire is you can only take port settlements but you can make outposts in certain cities so uh, the faction capitals I think uh, Altdorf and Drakenhof are two of them so yeah, here I am showing showing which ones you can take. They all give very nice buffs depending on where you take them. So we will be looking to take their settlement capitals off of them. Uh, because wh why not, effectively? It gives you a really good buff. And it's you just want to war everybody, don't you? Really. Um, so... They haven't got a big technology tree, but it is it is an amount. So basically what I want to do is I want to go after my enemy as soon as possible. Um, I do want as many troops as I can because I don't want to lose the battle. So I am at war with the Nagla Farlings. Um, down west we've got um, Norska with Wolfric. Then we've got Surth Egg with the Varg, and like I said, the Nagal Farlings, who are our enemy. We will be going for them as soon as possible. And then the Goromandi tribe, we have a non-aggression pact with to our east. But then in the middle, we have some pesky dwarves that we don't want to fight because they are ridiculously strong. And they're just not much fun, really. So, yeah, like I said, we will be going for the Nagal Farlings as our first sort of point of contact just because they they are our target we may as well take our target out as quickly as possible so yeah i i'll end the turn see 
what happens, where everybody goes, and I will be heading that way. So, out of the mist came the Negl Neglifarlings. This is their faction leader. Fortunately for me, he's not out of range. So I can just catch up and get him in battle. It is very one-sided, but he does have the Frostworm on the right-hand side, which is a strong unit. Just there, so... I do want to fight it. I I could I could auto resolve it, but why auto resolve it when I could just show you the faction and the units and the frost worm of doom that I really want to get my hands on. Cuz it it'll, it's for this early in the game, it's a strong unit. It will allow me to be able to push on to other factions. So these are your Marauder units, which we've all seen before. Then we have the Norskan Ice Trolls looking pretty badass, breathing cold air out with their massive clubs. Then we've got a frog stood with two swords in his back and a big massive hammer looking a bit scary and a bit dangerous. Down here we've just got the regular Norse controls, just again looking pretty badass. Then on this uh, this side we've got the Norse Warhounds, very fast unit, good for flanking, good for taking out your missile, like the enemy missiles. Because if you can get rid of the missiles, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a good time, because they won't be able to focus on your uh, trolls. And then. Back up this way, we've got the Norskern Ice Wolves, which again, very nice looking unit, has the Frostbite ability, so they do slow down enemy troops. So, I'm going to just set up with them on the flanks, trolls just behind them, and then my line of infantry just in the front, just to go and get them all into battle, and hopefully tie them down so I can do some flanking. One thing you should know, the Marauder units are a very slow unit. Um, they they don't run, they don't look like they're going to run. They're just a slow moving uh, unit, so you may want to speed your battles up to get them into position. So here I am, moving them all up. Like I said, they do take a while. But you can't, it, it's just one of those things. So I'm putting everybody into guard mode at the moment. I don't want them, I don't want them chasing enemies for no reason. Um, I, I need them to stay on the lines. As soon as an enemy breaks, I don't want them running after them because that's a good way to lose. So... Group attack order with all my marauder units, I want them just running in and I'm moving my trolls to the left just so I can flank round. They are coming to engage me. I'm looking at using the copious vomit ability on their lord, uh, but I've noticed that the frostworm's coming in and it goes straight for frog. Not a brilliant idea by the frostworm, but never mind, it's already taken sort of half its health. They are kind of glass cannon, they will do a lot of damage if you can get them in against what they're good against, but they will take damage really quickly because of their defences. Especially with the copious vomit, they have like a 40% um, fire weakness, and then bang, in with the ice wolves, clattering in the back, doing a lot of damage. Frostworm's coming back in, creating a nuisance of himself, so I decide to send throw back after him. Trolls and ice trolls cleaning up on the left flank, so I'm really able to sort of wreck the enemy here. And there, battle. Nicely won, really easily. So I'm just looking. I don't want to kill the Frostworm. Um, because I'm hoping to sort of get it in. So, 101 losses. Which which isn't bad. 
Um, I mean, my mar marauder units are just there to sponge while I can get my trolls in. Uh, granted, the, the Norse controls only killed four, which is pretty terrible. But what can you do? It's one of those things, I guess. But yeah, if you if you do enjoy this, guys, please leave a like and a comment. Um, it just gives me some feedback and lets me know if you are enjoying it. But yeah, the um the the mechanic of um being able to force them into a confederation with the Norse confections is so nice. It just gives you the ability of not having to chase down settlements and having to chase down final armies. If you can catch you their leaders, the head of their tribe, it's just it's, it's really nice. So here it's telling you that you we've both. taken the head of their tribe. You're basically calling him a bitch and you're in charge now. Um, may as well sacrifice captives, you get an extra amount of gold. So here we go, peace treaty, but the confederation is green. My advice is get some money from them, because why not? If you can get money out of them, get money out of them. It boosts your economy, and that's really all you need. So here, I don't really need a second army. I've gained a whole territory now. I don't need this building because I've got it over in Winter Pyre, so I can just destroy it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge the armies. I don't need two, but I can do with some troops. So I'll take the Frostworm. I actually take all of them. Um, and then I get rid of their faction leader. I don't need him, one army is quite alright, and it takes me from being bankrupt to having 49 income. So, like I said, you won't get a lot of income with the Norsecan factions. So, here's his skill trees. I could buff him. I, looking at the quest, like 7% weapon strength is outrageous, and casualty replenishment rate. Plus 25 for Norskan Trolls, Ice Trolls, and Fimir Warriors, which is crazy. And then King of Trolls, Public Order, and Upkeep for Norskan Trolls and Ice Trolls. So they are, again, a really buffing your troll units. Has all, his, all the normal um, boosts that your Lord would get. Um, that is really a nice Spawn of Chaos if you decided to go down there. I probably won't. Um, just because I'd rather make him a fighter and get him to buff his troops. So, here, melee attack for ice controls and Norse trolls. Uh, sorry, Norse controls and ice trolls. You're just buffing all your monsters effectively, which is what I'm gonna go for. And there, that is buffing your marauder units, which would be better for, I think, Wolfric. Um, I know he can buff the Marauders, but I don't know his skill tree. So now I've got no enemies. My next target is probably going to be Varg, because they are right on my borders. It wouldn't be wise going after Norska because they're so far away. So hopefully, if I can catch them and catch their faction leader out, I will take their lands just like that. So, moving down to Ealing's Conclave, just next to it is the Soil Encampment, which is uh, the Varg, so that will be my first target. And I'm just going to look at the economy. Um, like I said, the buildings aren't great. 100 income generated, which is not a lot, and then growth and research rate, which is not a lot, but every little help so I pop in growth just to get them upgraded as quick as I can and just uh, another quick end turn so my technology is researched 
walking over to the soil encampment and upgrading the um, aliens conclave just um, just so I can get more buildings there well better buildings there and then I've just encountered the scaling um, I will be using sort of aliens conclave as my sort of fortress um, another point for the winter tooth is when you've used all your movement points you can still go into raiding stance which is nice um, you don't have to have anything left just because they are kind of a raiding faction So here I go into Varg declaring war and down there down uh, to the left was Sertha Ek which is the uh, Varg faction leader so gain some loot gain a slave chain which gives you Eight leadership for Empire, eight leadership for Bretonian, and then income from sacking settlements, ten percent, which is a very nice amount. So here we go. These are being able to raise. So you, when you raise for one, you gain plus six, but then you lose minus two favor with all the other gods. So you can boost them all up. It just depends which one you really want to boost up first. So, like I said, there's Sertha Ek. Not a timely arrival. My warhounds have not eaten. He is a nightmare. Um, has chariots already that I can see. I'm going to sort of have a look at what troops I can get. Because I have a 16 stack, but... I'd rather have a full 20 stack so I'm gonna get some more hounds to like flank and go into the sides with and then skill point I'm gonna put it into um, I think I put it into frostbitten um, just for the defensive upgrade that you get um, and then at tier 3 you get a leadership buff with it as well which is good because the trolls have very low leadership and they will run away so yeah just bear that in mind upgrading the orbs with spawns gives you a little bit more income um, but it's mainly so you can get level 2 tier buildings so Sertha Ek running down to the Bay of Blades doesn't really want anything to do with me Who's this? Hellspire tribe wanting to join the war against the Varg. I don't really need them to. It's not going to help me in any way. Um, they'll probably just take lands that I want anyway. So I'm just going to leave them to it. Um, bring in Throg back to Ailing's Conclave. And I'm going to just, just bolt my force out. Get a 20 stack. Um, because I don't want to be going into a fight where I don't have the troops that I I effectively want. I um, there's no point in going with a 16 stack if I believe that they have a, a bigger army. I may as well bolt my forces out, take the income here, and then go after them and be more confident in the fight that I'm about to take so yeah <clears throat> so in turn Lamont Dahl is back Lamont Dahl sorry I can now upgrade so I go for the first dash like I said every little helps it's only a hundred income but it's a hundred more than I'm, I have at the, at the moment so moving towards the Bay of Blades, I saw Sertha Ek go down there, and there he is, in Bay of Blades, recruiting. He's got uh, six stack for his garrison, and then he's got, I think it's an eight stack in his army. So 
he's going to recruit on this end turn phase. So I'm looking at about an 11 stack that I'm going to have to go against. Plus the garrison, which is another 6. Goromandi tribe has ended their non-aggression pack with me. So I can kind of get the feeling that they're going to want to come after me. That's okay. That That's no problem. So, sending Throg down. It'd be nice if he came out, but he won't. Found Kislev. And the Van Heimlins and the Hellspire tribe to the west have started fighting each other. I mean, that's good. They will weaken each other. And effectively what I want to do is if I see a faction leader running around with a smallish army... If I can jump on them and kill them there and then and then confederate, it's going to help me greatly. I think that's what my tactic will be during this campaign, just while I take out the Norsecan tribes. So, going in against the Varg, pretty even. He's got chariots, marauder spears, and he's got uh, war mammoth in the right hand corner um, which is going to be a problem I don't I don't want them to get going because they will cause a lot of damage to me and Surfer Ek himself is on a chariot I don't want him to get going because he will also cause a lot of damage to me so the campaign map pretty uh, not the campaign map, the battle map. Pretty standard. We're going to go face off against each other. My tactic here is effectively I want to skirmish before I get into hand to hand combat. I don't want to have to get into combat straight away. If I can do as much damage. If I can do as much damage while being on the out outskirts of the battle, then it's no problem. I don't want... I, if I get into combat, the chariots and the war mammoth are going to tear me limb from limb. They are going to do so much damage that I will not be able to hold up with my forces. So, I'm just going to... They've decided that they're going to go and camp in the corner, which is fine. That's not a problem for me at all. I will move my forces, but I don't want to really run them. So I'm just going to walk them all. It takes longer, but I don't... If they're tired by the time they get there, that's going to put me at a disadvantage that I don't need to be at. Because it's fairly even fight, as you can see in the uh, sort of balance bar in the top. So, like I said, I'm moving all my troops up, just taking it nice and steady. I don't want to do anything stupid. And then sending Frog up, he will be the front line. But like I said, Marauder Chariots on the side are going to do a lot of damage if they can get into my front line. They always do damage. Chariots are extremely good in this game. And then there's the War Mammoth in the middle. Armoured, armour piercing, anti-infantry and causes terror. That is something that I do not want getting ahead of steam. I don't need that getting into my lines and causing damage. Because it's going to tear everything to bits. It's really going to damage me. And it's not something... That I need to happen. <laughs> so while I'm moving everything into position, I'm just really thinking about where it would be best for me to go. Putting everything into uh, guard mode so they're not going to go running after stuff that's rooting, just because you're going to lose troops that way. I'd recommend it greatly for anybody trying to play this game. So with my with my javelins, they are anti-large missile infantry. They their main thing this battle is taking out that war mammoth. They don't need to do anything else. 
They just need to focus that war mammoth till it's dead or broken. So, moving up. Not getting too close. I don't need to get too close. Just surveying my options. Having a look. Seeing what I can do. Using my frostworm. It's fast. It flies. I want to use it to... Just to sort of dive in have some attacks and dive out so again moving my force up taking my frost worm now this chariot they've been stupid they've left it not completely alone but on its own enough for me to just try and take in the frost worm it is armor piercing the chariot is armored so I want to get in and just do some damage to this chariot. If I can weaken this chariot enough, I can get it to... It's not going to do enough damage to me to really trouble me. Yes, my Frostworm's taking damage and they've got spears coming in. But the Frostworm is doing some good, good work. So I'm just going to bring it back. I don't want it to get killed. Um... <laughs> I want it to basically jump off and fly but it's not playing the game it's just wanting to run away which is annoying but what can you do chariots are chasing me um, it's a bit of a cat and mouse game at the moment I'm trying to run away and they're not letting me I've, I've kind of decided at this point I'm just going to turn back around and start whacking them again it's, it's enough a way that the spears aren't close enough to catch me <coughs> and it's health low, it's morale is low. I'm trying to basically kill it before the spears get in because the spears are anti-large, they will damage me. I have started to break the chariot and the spears have thought, you know what, we, we don't really want to mess. So, get my frostworm away, shouting at it, want it to fly away, it does then fly away, so... I've, out, I've taken out a chariot not lost anything. I'm just surveying where their army is. They are shuffling. I don't really want to go into combat yet. I would like to sort of keep trying to pick off troops if I can. That's the best thing I can do at this moment in time. So, using Throg. Looking for his copious spit. That does a lot of damage. If I can hit the War Mammoth or Surfer Ek with it, it's it's going to help me out. Like I said, I'm, I'm playing it slow, but I'm playing it smart. I don't need to engage just at this moment in time. I am able to shimmy around my troops and just kind of look at the area. <clears throat> I'm still trying to do stuff with my Frostworm on the side. If I can get in with my Frostworm, I am going to use it as much as I can. So, Surtha Ek, I'm going to go for the Copious Vomit. And the Marauder Hunters, I decide, you know, these are alone. I get in, smack them a bit. It, it does the morale damage, doesn't do the health damage that I was hoping it would. And here comes Surtha Ek charging at Throg. And he he does a lot of damage, to be honest. I, I really take a big, big hit there. But my javelins have started firing on Surtha Ek. And Throg smashes him in the face with a hammer and does does a lot of damage. So it, it's, it's going well. He's, his morale's low. His health is low. Throg's health is low as well, but he he's not going to win this fight with Throg. And then I'm trying to get my copious vomit back up. He starts fleeing, which is annoying, and they start bringing spears in. I don't get the vomit off. And then I try again, and I have no idea where it goes at this point. It just doesn't really do anything, I don't think. But never mind. So I've got their faction leader down. I've got some of their troops down. It's 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 looking good at this point in time. 
again, I'm going to send my Frostworm in just to scout out, try and shuffle them about a bit, try and scare them. Just trying to coax them into doing something that's stupid. It's not really working, so moving my moving my lines up, making them come to me a little bit. I've come to them. It's time to get them to come to me. So I didn't realise that <laughs> they were hitting my frostworms with the Marauder Hunters. My frostworms already low. I don't need it any lower. I need it to really do some work in this battle for me it's already took out a chariot but it needs to do more so my hunters i want them to go after their war mammoth sirth ek comes charging in into my marauder hunters he already got six kills and he's been in there 20 seconds and his his kills are just climbing it's it's actually disgusting how much he damages me it's, it's it's outrageous he is just having a field day and then i've got the problem of the mammoth the mammoth comes charging in i've got all my javelins aiming at him i've got throg going in for a copious vomit he's just tearing me to bits at the moment so i divert all of my flanking force i need to take this mammoth down and i need it gone now it is not even good so I've decided, okay, we're in combat, send everything in. So I'm sending my front line to engage their front line, and I'm bringing all of my reserves in. I need this mammoth dead. It's it's racking up kills. It, it's doing damage. Unfortunately for it, I overwhelm it, throw everything in, and manage to just completely take it to bits. But then another chariot comes in. And it is going to start cleaning up. It's gone straight into everybody. It is, it's going to take damage. But the amount of damage it is doing. It is worth it at the moment. It's, it's really racking the kills up. So I've brought Throg over. I need it gone. It's doing a lot of damage. It's hurting my morale. It's killing a lot of men. So... I'm diverting forces, just trying to get into it. I've decided enough is enough. Get my warhounds in. They've got a lot of missile troops, but if I can get my warhounds around the back, I can really kind of start wearing them down. They're gonna morale's gonna drop, and they're gonna hopefully break. The uh, the battle is really close at this point. It, the the bar is just in my favour, but not not like anything serious so i've sent in my my hounds into their marauders they're low armor so my hounds are gonna have a really good time and at this point we're just kind of engaged all over the front nobody's really making any headway so time for the big guns get my frostworm in already done work with the chariot killed one so it's time for the chariot to really kind of uh, sorry, it's time for the Frostworm to really kind of earn his keep. And my trolls in, in the back, in the back of their marauders. They're not going to have a good time against trolls. So Throg and my Frostworm really kind of go into town helping the front line. I just need to start breaking their troops before mine break. They've not got great leadership to, to begin with, so... It's kind of who's going to break first in this. It should be me because I've got their leader dead. And they've taken quite a few casualties. Luckily for me, I've managed to sort of break one flank with my warhounds. I'm now going after all of their missile troops. And I've got stuff in reserve. So my Frostworm is nicely in the mix. Throg nicely in the mix. And my my warhounds are shaking, but I'm able to outnumber their javelins, and that is effectively what I want to do. If I can outnumber their skirmishes and stuff, I'm gonna have a good time. It's gonna help me. So turn my attentions to the other um, skirmishes and send my warhounds after them. And at this point, 
I'm I'm feeling pretty confident. I, I've got my Frostworm. I've got Throg. He's, he's tired, but he's he's in the thick of it. He's getting his kills. He's doing what he needs to do. But I'm having a route as well. I've got troops going everywhere at the moment, just running away, not really wanting to do what they do. So I'm trying to manage the center where where all their troops are. I'm trying to manage getting my troops to kill their troops. But it's kind of it's not a clean battle. I'm not doing well. The Frostworm was probably the MVP here. He really helped out. He was able to tie up troops. He was able to get kills. He he was able to pick things off that I wasn't that I was effectively struggling with. So the balance bar it's it's about three quarters in my in my uh, in my favour now. It's just literally cleaning up the last of their troops, trying to make them route. route. And fortunately, they decide no. We've had enough. We are out of here. Pyrrhic victory, like I said, it wasn't clean in any way. Um, they started, well, we had about the same amount of troops. We lost about the same amount of troops. I think it was the fact that I took out their faction leader, to be honest. But like I said, Seth the Eck, 136 kills. And he wasn't even in it that long. That's the thing. I was able to whittle him down. And he was probably in the fight about... 40 seconds and he racked up so many kills so i will be using him he will be in charge of one of my armies and he will be the chariot god if you can if you can tie up their troops with your own um and get your chariots in then you're gonna have a good time, especially with Sertha Ek. He he alone did that much damage. So imagine how much you'd be able to do if you were to use him right and not just charge him straight in. If you could get him around the back, oh, I don't even want to think about it. But yeah, fairly even kills all across the board for my troops. 99 for Frog, 93 for the Frostworm. Like I said, the Frostworm was the MVP. He just knew what was, he knew what needed to be brought, and he brought it. So, Luke gained 2,000. That's how you want to use this faction. You want to get in and kill as much as possible. So, uh, here. I don't really know what to do so I'm just gonna sack to get a little bit more money because I'm going to force them into a confederation so peace treaty confederation and then again take as much money from them as you possibly can BAM dead immediately I have took all of those settlements and I haven't had to chase them down or anything. I have just come in, proven I'm the best, and they're mine. So I'm just gonna fix them up. Marauder chariots, there they are. So I want to get rid of this because I've got it somewhere else. So get rid of that because I've got it in Ailing Conclave. There's no point in having it again. At this point, I'm on the front line with Kislev. They're not going to take nicely to me. And the dwarves aren't going to take, take nicely to me anyway. They're probably going to come after me soon. Um, I want to boost my income a little bit more. So, get the beast tanner. It's only 100 more income. But it gives you buffs for raiding. And from sacking settlements. And then... Obsidian Quarry, minus 5 construction for all buildings, faction wide. Not a lot, but it all adds up. It's, it's going to help you, seeing as you don't have a lot of money anyway. Um, so yeah, just stick that in. And yeah, at this point, if I can catch, like I said, if I can catch a faction leader, I will catch a faction leader. So scaling, looking like they'll be the next target. Whack frost bitten in again, and I'm just gonna kind of heal up now. There's not much that I should do. So 
I'm gonna go for armor for marauder units. Only plus five. They've not got great armor, but every little helps. It's gonna, it's going to help me. So yeah, scaling are looking like the nicest target. I've got an 18 stack, and it's their faction leader. But like you've just seen, if I can take out their faction leader, I can just force them into a confederation with me. <clears throat> so like I said. In, in an episode you've you've seen that if you can take the faction leaders you can gain a lot of territory in a short amount of time and that's really what you want to do you, you don't want to have to go after every settlement you want to just expand and I think this is the best way with Wintertooth just rapid expansion so if you enjoyed the video guys please leave a like comment and subscribe bye bye